Hi, this is David Gawley from Pentagon Solutions and we're going to take a look at Revit Architecture 2010 and creating uh, a site or a topo surface. I'm going to go into my uh, site on my project browser and the first type of surface that we're going to have a look at or topo surface is just by picking actual points. So I click on my topo surface button and you'll see we've got various options here and what I'm going to do is just select place point. This is me arbitrarily putting some elevations on the actual site. So I'm going to say minus, say, 3000 to start with. I can pick the positions that actually represent my point. You'll see contour lines starting to form once I start to put in the other end of the site. So I'm going to bring the other end of the site up to 4000. So you can see my contour lines are starting to appear. When I'm happy with my site conditions, um, I can obviously add more levels in. I just go to Finish Surface, on the Contextual tab, and I have my site in. So if we have a look at this in a 3D view, you'll get to see my actual site conditions there. But that's not but realistic from um, a site point of view. What happens if we needed a flat area in here to represent, to put in a building or a pad? Well, let's take a look at this in the uh, 3D and plan view. So we're going to tile these windows out. Close the ground floor, we'll tile that again. So you'll see there's my 3D view. Here's my site and I'm going to split the surface. So I'm going to go back to massing and site, split surface, pick my surface and then you'll see I've got my draw options up here. So I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to go rectangle boundary finish my split surface out. So now I physically have two surfaces. Now we can, can change the actual element properties of this surface. So I go in the element properties here. Um, we can look at the instant properties of this and say the material of this one say is going to be asphalt. So if I scroll down, you'll see site, time Adam, and hit OK. That obviously looks quite grey, but when we render that out, that will come into site, um, look appears asphalt. Let's change this one to grass. Again, we'll scroll down, make that site grass, not up here green. So let's look at this in an elevation view. Um, you can see there's the uh, my site with the slight slope on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the levels. So I'm going to pick my in, uh, inner tarmac area and I'm going to go to the edit surface. And you'll see my levels. So I pick all my levels up here. I can actually change the elevation and drop them down to zero. So you'll see my site has changed. So if I finish that surface out, I need to make sure that I change my outer site to knit in against that surface. Now Revit's not a civil design uh, product. Autodesk have separate products for that, such as Civil 3D. But it's, you can quite easily very um, manipulate this. So if I select it, we can go Edit Surface. Again, I can pick um, my levels. This is for the outside of my site. I can change that down to zero and you'll see the contours have been updated and I can finish my surface. So I've changed the grading, if you will, for want of a word, um, of the actual site. So if I look at my north view, you can see this part of the site here is actually flat. Again, we can look at a south view as well of that, get better um, appreciation of it. Um, one other thing about this, um, my last final point really here, if we look at the south view, you can see my levels are a bit unrealistic um, because I've just got a generic ground in at zero. And this, this isn't true to site conditions. We would normally work into ordnance survey levels or survey levels from the actual site. So if we have a look at the manage options in here, what we can do is pick a particular um, setting and we can actually change the coordinates and we can specify the coordinates at a point. So if I go specify coordinates at a point, um, pick up on my ground, I can say, well, look, that elevation might be 50 meters and 200 mil above ordnance datum, or 50.2 meters, and hit OK. Again, you're not getting to see the change in there because what we have to actually do is select their level, change the element properties. I'm just going to do it under right click. If we have a look at the type in here, you'll see rather than project, if we change that the shared coordinates are shared. So you'll see now if I hit OK and OK, that'll update. And my foundation will change, my first floor, my wall plate. Not only that, it'll change for all views in there. 
So that's simply how to create a quite simple 3D um, surface in Revit uh, Architecture 2010 by just using um, points.